How's everybody? Yeah. How's everybody Good. doing? Come on, we can do better than that. Well, this morning has been almost a miracle to me. I don't know about you. I don't get out much. So, I mean, really, today has been almost a miracle to me. Jake and I have 20 minutes and we have 60 slides, so we're not gonna, we're not gonna futz around, okay? Mm -hmm. A little bit about Jake. Jake is from Cincinnati, I'm from Savannah. Jake is 30, I'm 60. Jake is a techie, I have CRS, which means advanced CRS, which means can't remember shit. <laughs> Jake has lived in Savannah for six years. I've lived in Savannah for 58 of my 60 years. Jake has worked at the Creative Coast for four years. I've worked at Chatham Savannah Citizen Advocacy for 35 years. Jake has a staff of two. I have a staff of two. <laughs> Jake and I are interested in two or three things. We're interested in a lot of things, but for today we're interested in two or three things. We're interested in the idea of place, and we're interested in the idea that everybody gets a place in our place. Jake is a come here to Savannah. I am a from here to Savannah. And we are interested in the nobody hears us who live in Savannah. Jake is interested in people who are young, creative, people who have a lot to give, and we don't know quite how to pull them in yet and help them be all they can be. I tend to be interested in people, interested in people who've been pushed to the edge and down and aren't seen for who they really are. Thank you. Um, like Tom said, we have a lot of slides, and please understand that these slides represent, um, each one of them represents a long story we have time to do a shorter version of each of those stories. Um, what we've worked on and what we're gonna present is five lenses through which we see our community. Five lenses through which we see our community. Um, and one of the interesting things that we're here to talk about today is not exactly what we do every day, but how we do it and where we do it and who we do it with. Are we stalling for our slides for one second? Okay. Um, the first of our, the, I remember stuff, Tom doesn't, so it's good that I'm talking first. Uh, <laughs> the first of our, uh, the first set, the first subset of our slides um, involves people. And what I'd like everyone to do right now, um, as, let's do it right now and then I'm sure our tech folks will be with us, is, um, we're good? Oh, great. Okay. So, we're back on. These are our five categories of many things that, that we love and do, but these are the five lenses that, that we, we, we threw things into for our slides today. First one being people. Um, and so if you would please be courageous and do what we have to do every day, but you only have to do it for 10 seconds. What we'd like you to do is stand up and connect with someone. We'll do it too. Connect with someone eye to eye. Remember staring contests when you were kids. I want everybody to stand up. Please, everyone, do this. We do it every day. Find someone you don't know and just look them in the eye. You doing okay? We're going to kill these fuckers. <laughs> we are. I can feel it. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. We've got these people in the fucking world. Oh, right? I think I might. <laughs> they need this. Yeah, yeah. They need to talk. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. Oh, people are desperate. They're desperate. Yeah, it's good. Because they haven't been, they haven't connected yet. That's right. Okay. All right. All right. We're all starved for conversation. That's beautiful. Thank you. Please. <laughs> Maybe that was, we just lost two minutes from our presentation, but that's good. Um, please um, bear with us. What we'd like to start with is this reality that we, both of us, and hopefully many of you, trust radical people. Addie Reeves, 100 years and 30 days, proud, poor, prophetic, profoundly influential in her community, a moral compass. Kevin Laver, a radical person moved to our community. He joined us 
And within two years, he was screaming to everyone, will you please join me? Jim Burke, the man in the wheelchair, who at the age of 60 decided to break free of facility. Kevin Fox, the man with the camera, a real estate developer, invited to help make that be. Here you see a gang of rowdy Baptists who had formed to uh, build a barrier-free bathroom for Jim so he could break free of facility and live in his own home. We, be we believe in radical people. Murray Wilson has the greatest quality of anyone you can ask for. He has the best quality you could ask for of anyone in your community. Always says yes. Murray, will you pick me up and drive me and take me to lunch? I'm having a horrible day. Yes. Murray, will you serve on our board for three more years? Yes. Murray, we don't have the budget dollars to replace the hard drive that just blew up. You think you can do it? Yes. We trust radical people to break barriers and build bridges. Tom Lamar, a brilliant man, having to live in bed this past five years. I helped him meet a man named Preston Hodges, a man who grew up in the deep, dark American South. These two men, in the later part of their lives, have forged a friendship. Preston says, this is the first black person I've ever considered a friend. Tom says, Preston is my blue-eyed soul brother. We trust radical people. And so when we travel, we take photographs, just like we've done in Roanoke. In the Bay Area, I noticed this young man. Pick a subject and a price. Get a poem. We travel, we steal ideas, and we try and implement them in our community. We trust radical people. Mayola Mason, mother of eight, She's only 80. Mother of eight, all those kids doing great. How do young people grow into good people? A good older person helps them. We trust radical people. In the middle, Dare Dukes, a good friend. We trust him to lead workshops on behalf of our organization. And for some reason, he trusts us to babysit his beautiful son, Zimmery, while he's presenting to our community. We trust radical people. We trust radical people. For 30 years, these two guys, one a steel company executive, and the other a man who has really nerves of steel, but who lives on the thinnest of ice, the weakest place of culture in our community. These two men have been answering the question, what can people come to mean to one another, and what can we come to mean to the common good? We trust radical people. Place. We believe in radical placemaking. So where were you born? Cincinnati. And what was the name of your elementary school? Wyoming. And what about your high school? <laughs> and what neighborhood do you live in now? <laughs> and what's your favorite bar? <laughs> <laughs> what's your favorite coffee shop? We know the answer to that. There we go. <laughs> we, we believe in, in radical placemaking. Place. up against the wall, up against the garage wall in downtown Savannah, telling the story of Wadi Welcome and the beloved community. A strange brew of people, about 60 people in that backyard, come here's, from here's, and nobody hears, hearing about this idea of beloved community, a place where the walls come down and people work together for the common good. We believe in radical placemaking. For some reason, 31-year-old Jewish guy living in Savannah, trying to get college kids out of Vinnie Van Gogh's The Pizza Shop across the square to the First African Baptist. First African Baptist, I'm taking kids out of the pizza shop, trying to take them to church. Why? Because we believe in radical placemaking. Priesthood Service Station. Roots and Culture International, hmm. Priester's Service Station on MLK Boulevard. We trust radical, radical placemaking. Culture and capitalism cross paths here at Priester's Service Station. Culture and capitalism collide. Sometimes they coexist, and sometimes they co-create. 
This is the image that the chamber sells of our community. This is the image that the magazines want to print. But we have 60 other images that we believe sell our community much better. Seafood market. Radical placemaking means leaving room and protecting places of the past. You'll notice on the uh, bottom window here, it says AD 29417. That was the phone number then. Ask your history of technology professor about it. They'll be able to tip you off. We believe in radical places where new and old just kind of work together, kind of like me and Tom. <laughs> <laughs> I'm standing. <laughs> we believe in radical place. God is a nappy-haired black man. God is a nappy-haired black man. Christ, a nappy-haired African holy man. We believe in places where everybody has their place and have their space. God is a nappy-haired black man. I will live in any community, any community, where you can put a boat on top of another boat and pull it with a third boat. <laughs> we believe in radical sexy communities. <laughs> These luscious lips lay on the cinder block wall, lay on a cinder block wall on Jefferson and Anderson Street. These luscious lips. We believe in radical placemaking. Food, we believe in radical food. Yeah, I want you to close your eyes and I'm going to say three words, all right? If you'll just close your eyes for a quick second. Fast food. Comfort food. Food for thought. Which image came more quickly and more vividly to your mind? Fast food or comfort food? Comfort food. Interesting. I suspect that it might be fast food, the power of Madison Avenue. It sounds like there are some refugees from advertising <laughs> here in the building. You know, it's a new day, organic, heirloom, and local as we find our way back to the old ways and the old days. Mexico, 2010. Some of this meal, I believe, is still with me. <laughs> Poor man's lunch. Have you had your fill yet of the franchises? You know, the KFCs, the McDonald's, in the macaroni grills, have you had your fill of the franchises yet? If so, there's great value in finding the disenfranchised, too. Speaking of disenfranchised, I happily took this picture of my wife in our beloved community. I live in any community that can challenge McDonald's to change their, um, let us say, ways of transporting food to downtown locales. V and D soul food. We can giggle about that sign because <laughs> I did when I first saw it. <laughs> that was until I got to know Vince and Diane who put their soul on the line every day. Speaking of putting your soul on the line, try and look my good friend Tony Jordan in the face when you have to choose between peach cobbler and red velvet cake. Vince and Diane cooking every day, the old fashioned way, feeding the neighborhood. Vince and Diane. I knew our economy was bad, but I had no idea that Checkers is now hiring $1 sausage dogs. <laughs> <laughs> we eat radical foods. <laughs> Cooking up community, casserole by calorie, calorie by casserole, casserole by calorie. 
We eat radical foods. Conversation. We trust radical conversation. There's this thing we say to each other, how are you? 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 The real question, of course, that people are dying for is who are you? Who are you? Not what do you do, but who are you? Radical conversation. Who are you? Sometimes in conversation, we need a little help, a little conversation starter. You know, websites are all right for sharing information. Tablecloths, though, just work a lot fucking better. <laughs> Before I die, Waters Avenue, Savannah, Georgia. MLK, Savannah, Georgia. What a conversation. Jim Collins opened his bar, Jim Collins Bar, in 1963. He ran it till 2003. That's 40 years. One bartender, seven stools, four tables, one jukebox, one bathroom, and countless conversations. New York City. Nobody's perfect. Tom's not perfect. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. We believe in radical conversation. Mr. Willie Gadsden runs the Neighborhood Soul Cafe. I came for the fried chicken, but managed to forge a friendship. Suburban photography. One day or one hour, photo development. Leave film here for developing. Remember that, Tom? I do. <laughs> We're inspired by radical conversation. Our final chapter is possibility. Trust makes radical possible. What we'd like you to do, just for a moment, 10 seconds, please, is to focus on someone that you trust and think about what that means to you. Someone you really, 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 really trust. Really trust and what that means for you. Is it possible that this is really the best we can do? Is it possible is this really the best we can do? The question becomes, who is he and who are we? When I start my week, I look at what's possible. My digital calendar is full for sure, but I still start with a blank slate on paper, akin to the tablecloth looking towards possibility in every person that I meet, every conversation that I have. When we bring everyone to the table, we can turn the tables. When we bring everyone to the table, we can turn the tables. If we're open 24 hours, literally open 24 hours to possibility, opportunity, and trust, we can accomplish a lot. Is it possible that we can all become who we really want to be? Is it possible that we can all become our true selves? That's you. Good. Okay. Is it possible that we can think of this man, Mr. Welcome, as a community organizer, as a connector, and is an unexpected teacher. I trust drivers every day when I ride my bike to work. And I trust them even more because most of the time I'm looking up at what's beautiful in our community. And I trust them not to run into me. Is it possible that this man, Wadi Welcome, will be recognized as the one of the 10 most influential people of the decade in 1999 in Savannah. Is it possible 
that he's helped us understand what it takes to go from thinking about someone as the other to thinking about someone as the brother. Three, two, one, 20 Thank minutes. You. Thank you. Thank you.